You're listening to The Alex Jones Show. Big Brother. Mainstream media. Government cover-ups. You want answers? Well, so does he. He's Alex Jones on the GCN Radio Network. And now, live from Austin, Texas, Alex Jones. Welcome back to the Alex Jones Show. I'm David Knight, your host today. In the next segment, we're going to be joined by the vice president of the National Motorist Association, John Bowman. He's going to talk to us about how you can stand up for your rights in court. We need to understand that across this country, we have police departments enforcing quotas. It's been admitted many times. The New York Police Department came after Adrian Schoolcraft when he made audio recordings exposing their quotas for minor offenses, not just traffic tickets, but all kinds of minor offenses in New York. And of course, they denied that that happened. They even arrested him and put him in an asylum, disappeared him. And the, he made a second audio tape when they came to his apartment and took him away of the second in command at the New York Police Department at the time, threatening to take him away unless he gave up his tapes. And they found the tape that he had on him, but they didn't find the tape that he had up on the shelf behind the books. And so we know exactly what was said in that room. His father had to track him down. His father was also a police officer. But they said, we don't have any quotas. But we saw what happened after the Eric Garner murder. We saw that he was killed over a minor violation, taxes on tobacco. And in response to the, to the city hall criticism from uh, Mayor de Blasio, they said, we're going to stop arresting and ticketing people unless it's absolutely necessary. And guess what? It went down by 95% and they lost millions in the city of New York for several weeks. Uh, I think it was a little bit more than a month, illustrating the fact that most of what they do is revenue collection. And we've got numerous examples of this all across the country that are happening. So we're going to talk to the National Motorist Association about what you can do and what you need to do to stand up for your rights. But I want to continue with your calls in this segment. Uh, let's go to Johnny in Missouri. Johnny? Hey, David. Thanks for the time, man. Appreciate sure, it. Go ahead. Yes, go uh, ahead. You know, we've got a lot of Patriot groups out there struggling to regain the footing that the American people are supposed to have. And I would like to bring one to the forefront if I could, sir. Sure, go ahead. Okay, we have a um, a signature drive going where we're trying to get a million signatures to put on a mandamus, which is an order to the court to acknowledge the citizens' position in our government, which is the head. Mm -hmm. According to our founding documents, so what, give um, us the give us uh, tell us where we can find that. We have a, a, be a absolutely uh, yeah. www.nationallibertyalliance.org. Nationallibertyalliance.org. Right yeah, and okay, it's good. Right on the right hand side of the page when you get on the welcome page. I think it's very important. We have to stand together collectively for our individual rights. Uh, that's what we're going to be talking to uh, as far as our rights as motorists. You know. Driving is not a privilege. That's what we're going to talk to the uh, National Motorist Association about. Thank you so much, uh, Johnny. Let's go quickly to uh, Frank in North Carolina. Frank, I want to try to get in as many calls as we can. Yeah, David, uh, thanks for taking my call. Hey, look, you know, you know, pe people wake up from a lot of different ways, and I'm glad people are waking up uh, as they watch Obama. But, you know, th this uh, system that we live under has been operating unconstitutionally mm -hmm. and in a predatory and criminal way since long before any of us ever heard of Obama. Now, oh, yeah. I, I'm a, I've, I've always voted Republican and all that until 10 years ago when I woke up. And, you know, people think that this is this started and is going to end with Obama. And I keep hearing people say, well, Obama's not going to leave office. He's going to declare martial law. I've been hearing that for every president ever since I can remember. I think it's a bunch of bullshit. Well, they've been operating under an emergency declaration since FDR. But, yeah, it, it's a... Uh People need to wake up, and they need to understand that this isn't a Republican, it isn't a Democrat thing. As I pointed out earlier, we got Lindsey Graham saying, as president, I would deploy the military against Congress. Well, maybe he's uh, exaggerating there for a point, but he's the guy who said, shut up, you don't get a lawyer, when they're talking about indefinite detention without trial. This guy is ruthless, and the people who want to excuse it for Obama are going to find it under a Republican, and the people who are Republicans thinking it's only Obama 
are going to wake up too. Sorry, I don't have time for more of your calls. Uh, don't hang on because uh, we can't. We're going to be talking about different subjects. We're going to talk about National Motorists Association. Use so I'll just before give you a the days of the Roman Empire to support the body's natural systems and enhance overall health. Introducing the new InfoWarsLife.com oil of oregano formulation, a highly advanced nutraceutical form of this key herb that has been traditionally used by civilizations for thousands of years to promote health. We have now procured the most high quality and potent forms of oregano oil on the market, sourced from top leading manufacturers to ensure a concentrated level of bioactive ingredients, extracted directly from the wild herb and sealed in easy to use capsules. You will no longer need to endure the burning of liquid oregano on the tongue. Wild crafted from the Mediterranean oregano species that experts agree is one of the most powerful and most challenging to acquire. This winter season, it's more important than ever to secure this true form of oil of oregano. Now available in our limited first run at InfoWarsLife.com. That's InfoWarsLife.com or call 888-253-3139. The average person's life is filled with unexpected challenges. Unlock the energy it takes to defeat these daily beasts with super male or super female vitality, specifically designed to assist the body in regulating proper hormone balance to create superior vitality in males and females. Supercharge and conquer your world at InfoWarsLife.com or call 1-88-253-3139. The government's Department of Homeland Security is buying up loads of ammo. At the same time, they're restricting civilians' rights to own and purchase firearms. Can you put two and two together? Infidel body armor can stop every round, including hollow points and 308 sniper rounds. Is reasonably priced and fully legal. But for how long? Go to InfidelBodyArmor.com, spelled I-N-F-I-D-E-L, BodyArmor.com. Infidel Body Armor just won't quit. Another major health threat, this one in Toledo, Ohio, where everybody in the entire city has been told not to drink the water. Ohio's governor declaring a state of emergency. Did you know that the average person uses about 80 to 100 gallons of water at home every single day? If there's a water emergency, will you be prepared? Panicked residents forming long lines throughout the day. Well, here at a supermarket in Toledo, you can see the shelves empty where water once was. To stay safe and healthy during a crisis, you must must have access to safe, clean water. Water which will not be available at your local grocery store. There's a mad dash on right now to stock up on supplies. The ProPure Pro 1 G2.0 water filtration system is a must have for every modern, independently minded household. Protect your family's safety during an emergency. Go to InfoWarsStore.com today to purchase your ProPure Pro 1 G2.0 water filtration system or call 1-88-253-3139. The Genesis Communications Radio Network proudly presents The Alex Jones Show, because there's a war on for your mind. Welcome back to The Alex Jones Show. I'm David Knight. We're going to be talking to the Vice President of the National Motor Association, John Bowman, in just a moment. But I think we need to remember that before this police shooting happened yesterday, we had the police chief as well as a corrupt judge and his court both taken out. And the basis for it had nothing to do with Michael Brown. The basis for them being taken out was that they were violating state and federal laws in terms of quotas, in terms of using their police and their court system to generate revenue. Not to protect people, not to enforce law, but to generate revenue. That is strictly prohibited under Missouri law as it is in most states. And it is prohibited by the Constitution, as the Justice Department pointed out. We have ample evidence of this. Let me just read you some of the cases. Going back to 2011, we have a police chief in League City, Texas, accused of threatening to punish officers if they didn't write a certain amount of tickets. And of course, tickets are, ticket quotas are legal according to the Texas Transportation Code. Then we have another one, May 20th, 2013. This is in Fort Worth. A North Texas officer says that ticket quotas do exist and it may be a ticket to getting a trophy. So he blew the whistle on the Fort Worth police 
and he spoke to the uh, local news writers there. Now, what they were telling them there was they weren't saying, we need a certain number of tickets. No, they were very clever about it. They called them, we have to have a certain number of contacts with the public each day. We need four contacts with the public each day. Oh, we don't mean that's tickets. Let me tell you what, they're not pulling people over and having them roll down the window and saying, I just want to tell you how awesome you are. Where'd you get this car? I just love this car. No, they're giving them tickets. That's what they mean by contacts. Now, the police in Houston got even more ridiculous about this. This is a story going back to 2006. They had a quota system, but they called it getting two, quote unquote, ducks a day, two ducks a day. And when they reported this in the Houston Chronicle, they said, well, they ran afoul of the law. Yeah, you know what? If it doesn't look like a duck, if it looks like a traffic ticket, it acts like a traffic ticket, and it stings like a traffic ticket, it's a traffic ticket. And then just this month, uh, just March 9th, just a couple of days ago, we see co cops across the country being disciplined, not for brutality, but for not writing enough tickets. They're talking about uh, cops in Whittier, California. Of course, we got the entire highway patrol involved in this in Tennessee. We've got another cop that was fired. This is an article from July 25th, 2013, InfoWars. Cop fired for speaking out against ticket and arrest quotas. So there's a lot of law breaking going on by the police when they're writing these tickets. And the National Motorist Association wants to help you stand up for your rights. And they will offer you, they will back you up. They'll offer you help to fight these tickets in court. They want you to go to court. They want you to stand up for your rights individually. If you lose, they've got a program, a, a traffic justice program, they call it. Well, they will pay for your ticket, your court costs. And so we want to talk to them about that, as well as the many issues. Joining us now is John Bowman of the National Motorist Association. Welcome, John. Hi, David. It's uh, great to be with you. Thank you for coming on. Now, we started out talking about these uh, traffic quotas and uh, Talk to us about that. Uh, that. That's a widespread national issue, of course. It is, and it's getting a lot of attention lately, as you pointed out. We, we see instances from all over the country, very similar to what you're talking about, where uh, a, a cop will sort of blow the whistle on what is the, the worst kept secret in law enforcement uh, in terms of ticket quotas. And the way a lot of the departments sort of spin this is they say, well, we don't have ticket, ticket quotas per se, but we do use... Uh, the ticket volume that an officer writes in terms of measuring their overall performance for promotions and for HR purposes. So they say, we these are nothing more than performance measures. And yeah. that's, that's how they get around this. But um, they're, they're, for all practical purposes, they are quotas. And quotas really take away what we think is, is one of the police officer's most valuable tools, and that's discretion and judgment. And there are certain cases where Normally, an officer would not write a ticket, but they're under the gun, so to speak, um, for their quota, and they'll they'll write up a, a lousy ticket and um, move on. So motorists and people on the street are the, are the ones who really suffer over this. Let me talk about, uh, you've got, I think it's about uh, 10 points on your website program, things that you guys are standing for here that I think are, are very interesting. kind of gives people a feel for uh, what the problems are on our roads. You say... Uh, number one, taxes related driving or vehicle ownership should only be used for road construction and maintenance. Two, drivers already pay taxes to construct and maintain roads, so they shouldn't be forced to pay them again in the form of toll roads. And of course, uh, John, we're going to see that these toll roads are going to take a completely different form in terms of charging us by the mile once we get the black box recorders in our cars. And that was the way that I found you was by an article that was written by your president about the black box recorders that have been finding their ways into our cars since 1994. Going back to 1994, there was only a couple of models of uh, GM cars that had the black box right. recorders in it that's been building. And as of 2015 models, all manufacturers are now required to have these black box recorders in there. And we know how this is going to break down. The very company that's making these black box recorders, Harris Semiconductor, has also been making Stingray devices that the police have been using illegally without search warrants to search our phones as we move around, mostly moving around in cars. So we know that with the combination of the capability of collecting and storing this information, we know from what we've seen, we just had a, re a report yesterday, how the CIA is doing the same thing, probably using the same, uh, they didn't mention, this is a Wall Street Journal article, they didn't mention that it was Harris Semiconductor, but we know that the CIA has been working with the U.S. Marshals 
also spying on people in a dragnet uh, manner illegally. We know what they're going to do with these vehicles.